Hey everybody, uh, this is Aaron. I'm just waiting for Koi. We are getting ready for our first little venture out to the Brazil formation today. Um, earlier than I want to go, although it's not really that early. But we're gonna just go out. We don't have permits yet uh, for this season. We're still waiting on those. But we've been locked up inside already now for a couple months, and so we thought we'd try to get some time out in the field, um, do a little bit of walking around, see what we can find in the Brazil formation. Uh, the site that we're going to today is uh, out by Hinton, Alberta. Um, it's on the way to Jasper, to the mountains, uh, and it's the equivalent of the Horseshoe Canyon formation. Uh, this is approximately you know, somewhere around 73 million, 70 to 73, depending on what portion of the, the rock package we're looking at. And uh, yeah, we'll see what you can find today. He looks like he's awake. You got a new car? No, borrowing it. Borrowing? Yeah. Alright. What's up with you? We'll catch up with you guys when we get there. Just arrived at our spot. We just parked. Let's see the car in the back. Uh, we're on the Athabasca River today. Just outside Hinton. Uh, it's unfortunately drizzling at the moment, but uh, it looks like it should clear up. The water's nice and low still, so we should be able to get to some of the exposure relatively easily. Uh, yeah, we've been able to do a little bit of this section of the river before but uh, two years ago the water was starting to get high so we ended up bailing on the rest of the, the area and then last year it was just way too high with the amount of rain that we were getting in the mountain. So we'll hike down to where we finished up a couple years ago. There wasn't much found on this side of the river at um, that point so yeah we'll see what we can do. We'll uh, slowly make our way down to where we start this year. We're making our way down the, the river here. We're just walking through a couple big thick sandstone packages in the upper Brazil. And I uh, figured we'd give you a little bit of a better idea as to what our project is out here and a um, little bit of background on these formations in the mountains. So Mad P project or the Mountainous Alberta Dinosaur Project is primarily focusing on two formations, um, the Brazil and the Coal Spur Formation. Uh, the Brazil itself is uh, the thickest formation, it's approximately 1300 meters thick and uh, it spans from approximately 80 to 67, 66 and a half million years. It's the equivalent of formations in the east uh, known as the Foremost Formation, the Old Man Formation the Dinosaur Park Formation, Bear Paw Formation, and the Horseshoe Canyon Formation, um, and then the Battle Formation, which is just, just a, a small formation out in the prairies. And uh, the Coal Spur is the equivalent of the Scholard, and it contains the, the KPG Iridium Boundary Layer Clay, uh, which we've been able to find a few few localities for which is kind of cool but what we're looking for and the reason why we're out here is you know for paleo in Alberta we have a really pretty decent understanding of the formations in the prairies the dinosaur park formation especially and uh, the horseshoe canyon formation but we don't really know a whole lot about what's going on in the upland environments during the, the late Cretaceous 
And uh, as we work out here more and more, we find that you know, there's some really interesting stuff going on here that we don't really know much about. We don't understand it. And a lot of surprises that we didn't expect to find. So it's just prospecting a lot. Unfortunately, the rock is incredibly difficult to work with. It's really, really well cemented. The sandstones generally produce vertical cliff faces, and so getting anything out of them can be difficult unless you find it in a rock slide, which is typically what we've been doing so far, is pulling stuff out of rock slides, which is a little bit problematic sometimes. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting place to work with. It's nice that we're close to the mountains. It's not as hot as the Badlands, which is also nice. But uh, getting into some of these river areas, we have to do it very, very specific times of the year. And prior to the mountain melt, like right now, is one of the best times because the water's at its lowest through the year. So we're taking the advantage of that right now. Unfortunately, the weather is not perfect, but it's keeping us cool at least. Uh, yeah, we'll see what we can find up here. So we just arrived at a spot that uh, I found some bone fragments a couple summers ago. And uh, we had just finished, actually just finished another spot, but didn't find anything, so it wasn't worth pulling out the camera for. But uh, we're gonna check this spot again. Uh, original pieces we found were just fragments. Uh, it wasn't really worth pursuing at the time, but hopefully whatever they were coming out of has uh, eroded out since then. But uh, let's see what we can find. Hopefully we'll be able to do something here um, later in the summer if we find its source. Did you find anything? What's that? Oh, centipede eggs, okay. Yeah, I'm scared of that. <laughs> yeah. I don't see anything here. Nope. No. No, it was worth a shot. Up there? No. 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 Alright, let's get moving. Yeah. There's more than enough rock to look at. See what we can find further down the river. Did you find a fragment? No. When I found them you know, two summers ago, when I was here, when I found them, it was already pretty much at the bottom of the hill. They'd washed out, and uh, yeah, they just they probably weathered out a year prior to. Yeah. But I couldn't find where the source was. You, know, you only have two chunks of bone. Finding the source is tough. All right, so we've gotten a little bit further down the river here, maybe, I don't know, not too far, maybe 500 meters, 600 meters, somewhere around there. Yeah, we're on to another exposure. This one's fairly big. You can see behind me, we're barely up on, high up on the hill. 30, 40 meters. Um, Still nothing, unfortunately, but you know, that's the way that it goes sometimes. I uh, have been finding tons of ash, which is great. I'll be able to pinpoint uh, the age of this section of the formation really well. Uh, it looks like it might actually be a little bit lower in section than where our bone bed is, which is good. Trucking along here, hopefully, hopefully we'll come across something soon. Tons of, tons of exposure for, oh, look at that, that's unexpected, Top Flight XL 2000 golf ball, somebody's nailing golf balls off of probably the other side of the river there, you can see there's another cliff face over there. You find anything? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, check this entire section. It's 
it's uh, it seems like a, a dud of a day. Never come out of here completely skunked. What's that? Ah, oh, just another like 30 meters, 40 meters. Not too far. Yeah. Just keep on walking downstream. See if we can find anything else. I just love that view of the mountains though. Yeah. I just wish the bone bed was on this side of the river so we could sit and have lunch every day looking out at that. It's nice when you're out prospecting and you want to sit down for a bit. But Anyways, we're going to uh, we'll continue walking down, grab our stuff and make our way down river. See how much further we can get in, uh, get with this, this side of the river for now. Yeah, let's start back up again if we find anything. Keep our fingers crossed. So we're just walking back here. I just turned off the camera on maybe two minutes ago. And uh, so we're sitting here, or boy was just behind me, and his bag was a meter away and we were just talking about why we haven't found anything so far and I looked down and there's a chunk of bone a meter away from his backpack. Um, so there's at least three chunks of bone in, in this little pile that's come out of the mudstone a little bit up the hill here. Um, we're trying to, we're going to try to find out exactly where it came from. But uh, his excuse was that he was planning on coming back this way afterwards and looking for bone, even though it was right beside his bag. We won't hold it against him, but uh, if you can see it, uh, there's, there's a bit of bone in here. Uh, it's really darkly colored. It is, it can be tricky to see, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, especially considering you can see on this surface, there's slicking lines. Uh, this has been faulted through, so it was. It's not going to be easy to find the rest of this specimen. But uh, we're going to GPS it anyways. Uh, we'll come back. We might look around here for a little while, see if we can find the most likely layer that it came out of, um, and then when we get the permit, we'll come back and actually clear the area to see what else we can find. But there is bone here. Uh, and you can see the, the surface pretty well there. Uh, that's the external surface. Um, but we're going to go through uh, some of this stuff now and see what, to, what we might be able to find here. We'll see. Hopefully there's something. Um, actually, yeah, there's a lot of bone. This is, there's a very large bone in here. Yeah. Um, uh, it looks like it's several vertebrae. So we might actually have something decent here. We'll go through all of this, see what we can find. If we can find what layer it came from, that would be awesome. We can mark it on the GPS. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's a good day when we find something out here. I knew we were going to find something. It's just a matter of how long it takes. And a boy walking right by. You might tease him for a little bit of the day. Oh, I'm sure I've watched my things all the time up here. <laughs> the bone... The, <laughs> the bone oxidizes. The surface of the bone oxidizes. Virtually the exact same color as the rock. It's really frustrating. I know that I've walked by bone out here. Like there's that specimen down on the southern... down by Sundry. And there's a disarticulated juvenile hadrosaur. You just walk right by the bone. Or one of our other specimens that we're currently on prep in, where we've taken the blocks that we could see the bone in, and then discovered there was an articulated specimen in it that we didn't even know was there, and then realized that we left half the specimen in the field that we'll have to go back for this year. So, yeah, finding bone out there can be difficult. 
and identifying it. It's really tough. So, not his fault. Uh, I'm not surprised that we walked right by it several times. Yeah, we're heading back to the, the car now. It's been a long day. Uh, we didn't really end up finding a whole lot at that, uh, that site. There was three pieces. Um, but uh, we think we might have found the, the layer that it was coming from, but we're not 100% sure, so it wasn't worth filming a whole lot there. It wasn't uh, nearly as productive right off the surface as we were hoping, but uh, we might end up going back later this year when we get a permit and actually kind of digging into the hill there. But uh, yeah, we're just heading back, uh, not too far from the car. All in all, it was a decent day. Uh, we'll see what uh, comes of it later in the year, hopefully. Future Aaron here. Unfortunately, while we were in the field, the battery died. Don't worry, you didn't miss anything anyways. We're already walking back to the car. Uh, that was about a month and a half ago. Since then, we've been fortunate enough to be sponsored by Agisoft. They've provided us with MetaShape Professional, which is a photogrammetric uh, software program, which uh, we're going to do a bunch of tutorials in the future for you guys so you can see how to do uh, 3D modeling of badlands or river valleys or whatever, as well as microsite material or larger bones. Uh, also, in the meantime, we've been down to southern Alberta. We went down for about a week. Uh, to do some prospecting. Unfortunately, we still don't have permits. We now know that they are in review, but uh, we were there for about five days or so. So we'll be getting you about five episodes. We have amazing material to show you, uh, some really, really exciting stuff. So please keep uh, watching. If you like what you saw today, please hit the like button. Give us that thumbs up. As well, please hit the subscribe button. With a thousand subscribers, we can start to try to use the channel as a way to fund our field work. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.